openly be ladies here, but when she comes, she will share about that. But it's for um, ladies in leadership. Because sometimes we give, we give, and we're burnt out, and we have nowhere to go. And sometimes we need to be ministered to as well, so it's good. So I just, I asked though she will come and minister, because we've done the socials, we've done games nights, we've done everything. And I just felt the Lord saying it's time to receive the word as well. We had a Dr. Amanda minister. We had Beverly minister. We've had Shara minister. I've ministered. We've all shared. But I thought it was time to bring someone from outside to come in. Amen. So can we be upstanding and just receive Pastor Lola as she comes and minister tonight? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. I, I'm here today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, but I'm here today just to share with you. Is that okay? It's not going to be no fire preach. It's just, I'm just going to share. And I just want to do it from a slightly different angle. So sorry that I'm not sticking to the scriptures that you have for the ladies, um, because I felt that I needed to do what I heard the Lord say do. You may be seated. Two things before I pray. As I was home today, I said to the Lord, what should I wear? Ta-da! You see? Who else? Who else? Philip, is it? Thank you. I said to him, Lord, what should I wear? And he said, red and black. Come on, girl. All accessories. Red. Shoes red, handbag red, 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 red. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Because all that is saying is that we're in tune and that we're listening to the Holy Spirit. So, Father, tonight, we bless your holy name. We honor you. We give you all the praise. As co-pastor Carolyn has said, Jesus, it's all about you. Nothing to do with us. Let this flesh decrease, my God. And let your word come forth in power and light and majesty. Let your word touch every heart, every life, every soul, and every spirit here tonight. Transform us, Jesus. Cause us to leave here, not the same way we came in. We come as we are, but God, help us not to stay as we are. Transform our lives. Let the word renew us, refresh us, rekindle us, restore us tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration. There is none like you, Jesus. Have your way in this place, in the hearts of your women, your precious daughters, in Jesus. Amen. Ooh. Pastor Carolyn, I was waiting for you. And you were waiting on me to come in. And I would have been in a long time. I was basking in the glory in, in the room. I was like, this is worship, girl. Woo. Man, I, 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 just, I just heard for you that there's a new path that you have stepped onto. You have accepted now the calling and you've stepped onto the new path and you've put him first and he said because of that I've put you here and the desires of your heart he said let her know that I have already granted them you can pray but before you have prayed the answer has already come There, you have stepped into the river and it's at your ankle but you're, it's going to go up to your knees the Lord said, it's going to go up to your thigh. And then the Lord said, then you're going to swim. And then nothing, hear me good, will be impossible to you. Because you trusted him. You changed things for him. You lined up with heaven. And he said, you will sit on my lap. And I will pour into you. There are secrets that I will tell you. Just you. Because you've been faithful. You've gone through but you've come through. The Lord said, you have been faithful, daughter. 
you are precious to him. And I saw you sitting on his lap and him whispering secrets to you and hugging you and enveloping you in his love. The Lord said, remind her how much I love her. Help tell her to block her ears. Only hear what I say. Only do what I say. And that's what you've been doing in this last season. That's the change. That's the shift. And the Lord said, remind her I love her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 1, verse 6 is the scripture that I'd like to read. You know it off by heart. You know it off by heart. Ooh. There's a river that's flowing in this place. A river of life. Philippians 1 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has ooh, began a work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, this just popped out of my Bible. It says, uh, Trevor. I, was, I didn't even know it was in the scripture, and it just appeared. Unless it just appeared, I don't know. But I was in my bedroom, and um, can we just talk? Yeah? I was in my bedroom, and I was worshiping, praying and worshiping. And I said, Lord, there's some stuff that, you know, needs to come into alignment. And it's going to happen today. And so as I continue to worship, just out of the air, Whoa, where did that come from? But I believe that angels, when we worship, because they don't have the pleasure of salvation, they don't have the pleasure of salvation. So when we worship and we enter in, they come and they glorify God with us. And, and the Lord was just letting me know that, sweetheart, don't worry, I'm here. Those things will shift. You keep decreeing and declaring. Preach my message. How dare you? And you, 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 you keep the word in your, on your lips, and you'll see the shift. And that's what he wants to encourage us tonight. I'm just going to do it slightly different, but he wants to encourage us that if we decree and declare, I think it's Job 22, 28, a thing which shall be established in our lives. And also, uh, Philippians, he says, being confident, oh, let me not go, let me not go ahead of myself. <laughs> Women of a divine purpose, discovering the beauty within. Mm. A loaded topic. And I said, Lord, I can look at this, I can look at the Proverbs, I can look at that. He said, no, 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 no. I'm coming from a different angle. I said, okay. How, as a, as a woman of divine purpose, how can we discover our beauty? The first thing I wanted to look at, or the Lord said to look at, is what is purpose? Because it's different for everyone. Number one, two things. Number one. The reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. It is meaningful. It's, it's fulfilling. It satisfies the goals which increase our desire. That's, that's what purpose is. Number two, a person's sense of resolve or determination of being. Okay. Explain that. You have been, for example, created to do this. To walk in your destiny. No one else can do it. Pastor Helen. No one else can do what you do. You have been created to fulfill your purpose. 
divine purpose that comes from the heavens just for you. That's what purpose is. Uniquely, divinely orchestrated for you. You see, I couldn't, I love the way you came up and said about the slim fast. And, and you, you did all that. I couldn't do that if I tried. And, and, you, and I love the jokes. I couldn't even do that. Because you are uniquely, divinely orchestrated, created for purpose. Every single one of us here. That's why we're here. You're not here by chance. Oh, it's Pastor Lola. Oh, God, can she find another speaker? No, because before the foundation of the earth, it was spoken that I would be here today, and so would you. It was not by chance. Not by chance. And also, Psalms 139.14 talks about us being wonderfully and fearfully made. Made. Come on, talk to me. Our soul knoweth right well. What is the Lord saying then? He's saying, I want you, I need you to be confident in me. Because I have started something in you. Divine purpose has started in you. And I will come Complete it. But there's a process. He shows us the beginning, but he never shows. I tell you, if God ever showed me the process that I'd have to go through to get here, I would have said, forget it. Find somebody else. Create another Lola Gordon. Whatever you need to do, a clone if you like. Let her get on with it because I ain't going through that. But you see, with divine purpose, you have to. Okay. So he's saying, I need you to know how beautiful you are. Inside and out. You are on a journey, which I, God, have started. And I am fulfilling, and I'm faithful, sorry, to complete it in you. And I will build you along the way with a determination to win. Who wants to lose? Who goes into a game and says, oh, I'm going to come last? He has built us with a determination to win. When we're going to win, we have to win because he's created us to win. That's what purpose is about, winning. Let me tell you about this young lady that I knew about. She's about seven years old. She, um, sorry. She realized that she couldn't go to bed unless she had a little lamp. I don't know how many people are here from Jamaica, but they used to have, years ago, the little turkey lamps, the, ti the tiny little ones. You have big ones, you used to have a little tiny ones. And so she, need, she used to go to bed, her mum would pour the oil in it, or the paraffin, I think it was. And, and sorry? All right, we have some in here. Curse as well. Okay, and pour that in, and she would not go to sleep unless that, that, that lamp was on. Then as she grew, she was seven. Then as she grew, she realized that she was afraid of the dark, afraid of cats, afraid of dogs. It's a true story. Afraid of people, whether they were white or black, totally afraid. And she realized, and she was saying to her, to, to her mom, why am I fearful? What is it in me that everything I do, everything I attempt to do, I'm fearful. And mom said to her, well, it's probably because what the child I had before you died, the little girl, and I was not only fearful, but I was petrified that when I was carrying you, that I would lose you too. And so that, that might be because her mum wasn't saved at the time. So her mum said, that might be why you are very fearful. Okay. So she'd go in a lift. She had to get out of the lift very quickly. Because, is it claustrophobia? Oh, it, the world calls it claustrophobia. Uh -huh. Anything she did, fear would grip her. 
She got saved later on. And guess what? The fear didn't go. Oh, no. Because by now, the enemy, which she didn't know, she didn't understand strongholds. She didn't understand generational curses. She didn't understand the things had to be broken. She didn't understand that. So by now, the enemy has already got his hooks in her. And so she got saved. She's still fearful. Not as bad, but still full of fear. So it came to a point that she said, oh God, I cannot take this. Set me free. Help me. I can't walk in this. I'm talking about purpose. And so the Lord said, well, you have to do something, sweetheart. Proverbs 3, 5 to 8. Trust in the Lord. Because you see, we're self-sufficient, you see. Oh, I can handle this. Oh, it's all, you know, I'm a woman, you know. Strong black woman. Oh, yeah, I can take it off. He said, you have to do something. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways, not some of your ways. Acknowledge him and he and I, the Lord was saying, will direct your path. Okay. Hmm. So she said, okay, I will try. I will do my best. Every woman, I'll do my best. And, 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 and then she started to spend time in the word, time, more time in prayer, be very selective where she, who she went around, what she did. And she started to begin to stand and become the woman of God that she is today. She started to believe God's voice rather than the voices she heard. And she said that that made a difference in her life. Okay. Every woman that God has a divine plan and purpose for will have to combat some type of issue. Whether it be fear insecurity, depression, failure, disappointment. Some people have, have been like a friend of mine I've been counseling. She was raped when she was younger. Whatever it is, you have to combat it if you're going to walk in your purpose. That's why I started with fear. Oh, I'm shy. I hear that, but it's a lie. Do you know why? The root of that is fear. Oh, but I don't like to be at the front. Of the, the reason why I don't like to be at the front is because you might be rejected. Because the root of that is fear. I can go on. The majority of stuff, what am I talking about what is purpose? You can't get into purpose unless you deal with the foundation, which oftentimes is fear. Someone lets you down. Or oh, guard my heart. The Bible says I'm... You know when we take the scriptures to circumvent them for our own good? The Bible says I should guard my, guard my heart. No, it didn't say guard your heart because somebody hurt you or because church brethren hurt you or because pastor hurt you. He's talking about something else, but you know we circumvent it for ourselves. Oh, the Bible says guard my heart, so I guide my heart so I no longer trust. That is rooted in fear. So before, that's why I said I ain't coming with, oh, a woman is a, a, a divine purpose. Da, 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 da. No. Let's deal with some stuff, because otherwise we'll come in here and go back out exactly the same. Because we had a nice message, a nice preach, but we're not dealing with the real issues. So the Lord said to me, talk to them about fear first. And then we'll go on to purpose. But with fear, you see, it's a root and then off it are shoots. And we need to sometimes, because we say, oh, we dig up the root. We dig up the But there are shoots that went off and have sprung over there. And then you have Uncle Auntie, Tom Cobbler and his wife and his children, and everybody connected to that root and that shoot. And so you're here digging up. Oh, praise God, hallelujah, everything's wonderful. Well, not really. Because over there you're having issues with other things because the root is fear. So before you can step whole into being 
a divine woman of purpose discovering the beauty. What beauty? If fear is filled in our hearts, if fear directs us, if fear takes us, what beauty? You're filled with fear. So the Lord said, deal with that first. In fact, stand up. Where's my singer? Where's my worshiper? Come, baby. Beautiful girl. I've known this. I've known you from your baby. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Sing this song. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Of God. I'm no longer, stand up, sing this, a slave to fear. We come to church and we laugh because we're filled with fear. And we sing, I'm no longer. In this season, the Lord wants to do a new work in us. Pastor Helen said it earlier Behold, I do a new thing. Can you not see? He wants to transform us in our thinking, in our speech, and certainly in our lives. Some, I agree, I agree with you that some experiences that we've gone through has knocked us off track. There's pain. There's hurt. There's mistrust. There's been damage. But God was there with you in the midst of it all. Talking to you. Much has happened. Been let down, been stripped, been broken. But he was there in the midst because he wants to use you to help other people. If you don't go through it, you can't come tell me because you don't have the experience. And then on top of that, he wants to use you for his glory. At this, right at this juncture, I just hear a voice. Well, why did that happen to me? Why did I have to go through whatever I needed to go through? You can keep standing, stand right where you are, Nicole. Look at John, here it is. John 9, 3. The disciples said to Jesus, why was this man born blind? Why does this have to happen to me? Why do I have to go through this? Why did they do that to me? Why was this man born blind? I think that was a silly question. Because when you're born, you can't determine why if you're blind or lame or whatever. And then they realized that it was not a really good question. They said, or oh, his parents. Had he sinned? Or had his parents sinned? Had he sinned because he was born blind? And, and Jesus said, no, neither his parents, but that the works of God may be manifest in him. So when you go through stuff, why me? Why not you? That the works of God may be manifest in you. I want some people here to be honest. So I ask you to stand. Put your hand up if you're struggling in, in any area where fear, insecurity, intimidation, whatever, where the roots and the shoots has touched. Okay, come, man, if you can. Come. We're going to break some stuff tonight because it's pointless me doing the nice bridge and you leave here the same. Pointless. It makes no sense. We have to be practical in this day. It's not about happy, clappy church, glory, hallelujah, only. It's dealing with stuff. 
yes, come. Because some of our sicknesses is rooted in fear. Some things that have taken place in our lives is because of some things that we've spoken over ourselves. Oh, I'm so silly. Not me. I'm the most intelligent person you can find. Not in the sense that I have a PhD or any of those things. Don't be, don't be. We're, we're, we're sisters, come on. Don't be afraid. We're sisters. We, we need to be real. There are things that are stopping us walking into being women of divine purpose. These things stop us. Because if we take a step, we're fearful. How can God use that? We can't flow in fear. That's not how he wants us to live. Come, baby, come. You're, no, you're standing behind? Okay. Standing behind? Okay, come. 